Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at another 2021 Overwatch League roster. This time it is the Guangzhou Charge who finished 5th overall in 2020 with a record of 18 and 7 with a plus 5 map differential. One of the lowest map differentials of the teams that did finish positive. The only team with a worse differential uh, that had a positive record was the L. A Gladiators and also the LA Valiant as well uh, had a worse differential. So interesting spot for them, a team that found some success early in the season and then of course in the Summer Showdown found success winning that tournament, but by the end of the season they were struggling and going into the playoffs they got 6-0'd, losing 3-0 to the Seoul Dynasty as well as to the NYXL. So this is a team that did not have a great ending to their season, and that reflects very much in the changes that they made to their roster. Only three players from their 2020 roster are returning. Oh, well, I'm sure there are some more players that they did want to hold on to, that they were unable to hold on to. Um, we can see that they have made a, uh, a lot of changes going into 2021 with these new roster moves. So, let's start with the unchanging part of this team, the tank line. Rio and Krong are the two tanks on this team. They're the only two tanks on this team. They are returning from last season. Krong, one of the players that impressed me the most last season, his uh, Sigma play in particular was very good. Uh, his D.Va was also pretty good. His Zarya was pretty good, but he, he really stood out in his Sigma, and, and that is a little bit of a worry for me, Is especially with these Sigma nerfs we got recently. How key is Sigma going to be going forward, and is Krong still going to be able to keep those really high-level performances if he's not playing on the Sigma? I don't think his Zarya was bad. I definitely don't think his D.Va was bad, but his, his Zarya definitely was not as good as some of the other Zaryas we saw in the APAC region. Uh, one of the big ones, of course, being um, Bianca, who that was one of the matches for me that kind of st stands out to me as one of the key matches from last season. Bianca had done with in his first match in the Overwatch League went up against Krong and basically just obliterated him in the in the Zarya matchup and it was it was not a super close match and so that is a concern that I have um when you pair him with Rio who is a good main tank I've seen a lot of people kind of say he's one of the best in the league he's kind of top three top five I, I don't know if I'd go that far he's very good and he doesn't really have a major weakness in terms of uh main tank play he can play pretty much all of them at a pretty high level. His Wrecking Ball was not the best, um, but, you know, that could change. But he also isn't, to me, this really strong, solid, super consistent, you're going to get incredible performances all the time out of him main tank. He's just a good main tank on all of the main tanks, but I don't know if I would say he is a playmaker who really does a lot to kind of shine uh, he's a solid player. He's a strong player. I don't want to make this seem like I'm bashing him as a player. He is very good, and um, he is definitely a main tank that I think is capable of leading a team to a grand finals, but I think you need to have the pieces around him, and that's where I get a little bit more concerned about this team uh, based on the pieces they have around him. I feel like this is a team that may start to show a lot of holes as the season progresses, uh, with the amount of changes they had, especially uh, the DPS line and the support line. Uh, I do think it is something to to kind of uh, keep note of and, and then make sure you're kind of paying attention to. Um, but I, I think that this tank line will still be good. I still think they're in the upper half of the league. But I'm curious to see how this roster does now with new players around them. Moving on to the support line. We have a new support line for this Guangzhou Charge team, though. Neither of these players are rookies to the league. They are both actually veteran players, if you do want to call one of them that. That would be Mondu, who is the main support for this team. Uh, he is technically not a rookie. He did play for the NYXL last season, though he did not see much playtime. He saw a couple games here and there, a couple maps here and there, but he, he played very little. He didn't really impress me when he did play. He was fine. It seemed very much like his lack of playtime 
kind of prevented any real strong synergy between him and the rest of the NYXL. So uh, I'm not surprised uh, that he got another chance on a different roster where he gets kind of the full resources. A little interesting to me that there is only one main support and it is Mondu. Um, obviously, this is a team that thinks very highly of Mondu as a player, which I, I, I think is fantastic. I think if Mondu is able to perform at a high level, that's great, and I, I would love to see that from Mondu, and I, I, I do wish him the best. I, I am a New York Excelsior fan, so of course, I always wish the NYXL players the best of luck. So, uh, I do like seeing Mondu on another roster. I think he's going to be one of the most interesting players to watch for this roster because he didn't get a ton of playtime last season, so while he isn't technically a rookie, he feels very much like a rookie because of how little playtime he got. Paired with him is Kariv, who is one of the most interesting signings for this roster. Kariv, of course, formerly of the LA Valiant and the Toronto Defiant more recently. Very interesting player. Uh, a player who I think his Ana in particular is very good. Um, his sleep darts are some of the best in the league. His 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 knowledge and understanding of when you know EMPs were going to be used back in season two were, were amazing, and his sleep's ability to shut that stuff down was very good. But I don't know how much I think he is going to be able to perform at a super high level this season. Is he's good? Don't get me wrong, and he's had very good performances throughout his career. My problem with Kariv is that I feel like his best days are behind him. And when the only supports on this roster are Man Mandu and Kariv, I have a few concerns. Now, I don't think Kariv is necessarily the player who's going to hold this roster back a ton. Um, now, that, that could be wrong, obviously. That, that is, that is a, a take that could uh, come back to bite me and, and end up being incorrect. But I do think he still has potential. I thought that he was pretty consistent... When he played for the Toronto Defiant last season, he didn't have the same highs we saw when he had uh, his time with the Valiant. And that, to me, is to be expected when you're on a team that isn't as good. Um, but there were some, some matches that stand out to me. Uh, some of the matches with the Vancouver Titans in the May Melee qualifiers and the one like right after the May Melee qualifiers. I thought Kariv played very well in those matches. He stood out to me a lot as someone who was having really good matches, who was really kind of popping off, showing up. Uh, with good performances. And so I do think Kriv still has uh, potential, and he still is a good player. But I do have some concerns about his consistency and whether or not that he is able to be the centerpiece of this roster they need. I think there's a very good chance that he is still as good as he was when he played for the LA Valiant, and he just had a down year when he was with the Toronto Defiant because the Defiant weren't a very good team. They were kind of disheveled and just kind of thrown together. It was a weird roster. It just... Seemed like they were going for a very popular roster, and it didn't really work the way they wanted to. Um, now he gets to go on a Guangzhou Charge roster that has found success uh, in 2020. It is a new roster with a lot of new pieces, so it's difficult to say for sure. But I think pairing Kariv with Mondu is very interesting. You get two players who are pretty pretty aggressive. Um, Kariv is not the most aggressive flex support, I don't think, but definitely a, a support line that isn't going to be super passive. This is not a flex support who is just going to be sitting in the back all the time, not making any plays, not going for, for huge moments. Uh, Kariv does that, and you pair him with Mondu, who was known for his aggressive Lucio play when he was in Contenders playing for uh, O2 Blast. This is a team that I would expect to see a lot of those types of uh, things out of this support line. I think that they're, they're that type of support line. I think they're very good at that. It's just a matter of can they do some of those other things that we have seen out of them in the past. Um, can that aggression work well with the team uh, and the way that they're playing? That's where my main questions come in. So we'll see, uh, I guess. But it's something that I am especially keeping my eyes on uh, because I think it is something uh, of, of note and something that definitely needs to be uh, considered when you look at the way some of these players have performed in the past. Finally, we have the DPS lineup for this team. The only returning DPS player for this team is Eileen. Crystal is gone. I don't know why I started with him, but I felt like starting with him. Crystal is gone. Nero is gone. Happy is gone. Eileen is the only of the DPS players to remain on 
this roster from last season. Eileen was an MVP candidate, though I don't think he was a super strong MVP candidate. Um, his main kind of performance was in the Summer Showdown on Genji, which he did play very well. Um, outside of that, I thought Eileen was good, um, not incredible. Um, I do think he is a very solid flex support, or not flex support, flex DPS, and I think he will bring a lot to help this team play at a high level. I think he will probably be the player who sits on the bench the most of the three, though, just because um, of the other flex DPS player they added, Choi Sewan, who is coming out of Element Mystic. Uh, obviously a very, very good team uh, from Contenders, though they weren't the best team recently. Uh, there's been teams like O2 Blast and World Game Star who have been very good recently. So... It is something to note, but I think that, that Choi Sewan and Eileen will probably split a decent amount of time, um, especially at the beginning of the season. I wouldn't be surprised if Eileen starts earlier in the season and then it moves over to Choi Sewan. Um, those are the two I'm kind of looking out for. The player that I think is really interesting, like like really interesting, is Mike Kaylee, or just Kaylee. I don't remember exactly what he's going by in the Overwatch League. But he has been very good in his time uh, on that hitscan roll. Uh, during, I believe it was the Shanghai Masters Tournament, he was playing out of his mind. He was just clicking heads, having a really good tournament for himself there. And so that, to me, is a very good sign that they have a very good Chinese duo in Eileen and Kaylee who are going to be very strong players for this team and who will help elevate this team to compete in an APAC region that is pretty tough. When you have the likes of the Philadelphia Fusion, the Shanghai Dragons, the Hangzhou Spark, who I think are very good, the uh, Seoul Dynasty, who I think look very good, you need to be able to have players that can kind of put up some consistent results. And I think that this duo is good. I know this is a team that will most likely play... Um, and calm in English because that is what they did in the past. Um, obviously, this is now a team that does not have any non-Korean or Chinese players. Uh, they have moved on from Nero and from Neptuno, and of course, you know they had Kib and Fraggy. When you want to go all the way back to the early days of this team, uh, when they acquired, you know, Fraggy from uh, the Fusion and Kib from uh, uh, Contenders before the season. So this is a team that probably will come in English, though they might come in, in Korean. Um, there's a possibility they do that. Uh, that is something we see sometimes. The only, you know, there's a possibility the only Chinese player have on the roster at any given time is Kaylee. And I don't know if he is able to come in Korean. If he is able to come in Korean, that's a really big addition for this um, team. I know we've seen, like, Molly can come in Korean. And so if this is the situation where you have two Chinese players who know to come in Korean. I mean, Eileen has played with a lot of these players. Um, you know, he played with Krong and um, Rio already for, for a couple seasons, so he at least that's probably picked up on some stuff uh, from those two. So I think this is definitely something that isn't potentially a problem if there are uh, some some cross-language calming, um, but I would expect them probably to calm in English. That's usually where these teams calm when they have mixed rosters like this. Um, so that is something I definitely am concerned about a little bit, um, but you know, seeing how the Guangzhou Charge performed in the, the this past season, I don't really think it's that big of a deal because typically these teams work with that stuff out. That's usually not a, a big deal. They <laughs> tend not to struggle with that, so I won't worry about it too much. But I do think this is an interesting trio, and I'm really excited, especially to see Kaylee. There's been a lot of really good talent coming out of China recently, and it's a region that I think has really been. Uh, improving over the past several years. And so it's it's one of the things I'm most interested to see what happens uh, going forward because I want to see how well some of these Chinese players perform when they've had a, a good region in contenders recently. We haven't seen incredible performances out of Chinese players uh, in the Overwatch League. We've seen some. Obviously, like I said, Eileen last season was very good. He's probably the best Chinese player we've seen so far in terms of like consistency and just like his impact um overall but he's on a, a, a roster that was always kind of uh primarily korean so i am curious to see uh how this team incorporates these two chinese players one who's already been incorporated one who is going to be newly incorporated but 
He looked good during the Shanghai Masters Tournament, so I don't worry about it too much. I want to talk a little bit about their coaching staff. Uh, they added three coaches. They have a new head coach, Arachne, who most recently coached with the uh, San Francisco Shock, one of Krusty's assistant coaches. Before that, he was a coach for Talon Esports. So he is somebody with Overwatch coaching experience. He is coming off of a grand finals coaching job. So definitely a player to look out for. Uh, definitely, or not to player, a coach to keep your eye on as somebody who is coming from that crusty coaching tree. Somebody who has learned under one of the best coaches, if not the best coaches in esports history. Um, definitely the best coach in, in Overwatch. And that's a huge plus. And then you also have two assistant coaches who are both former players, um, both former Overwatch League players, uh, though Damon uh, did not have a ton of playtime in the Overwatch League. Uh, he was a player for the Shanghai Dragons back in 2018. And then there also Neko, who most recently in the Overwatch League played with the Toronto Defiant, but also played with the Boston Uprising and in Contenders uh, on O2 Blast this past year. So I'm really interested in this coaching staff. Two players, I think, is always a good way to have coaches, and we've seen a lot of players transition to coaching recently, and I think find decent amounts of success. Um, Aid is the one that stands out to me, uh, helping lead the Paris Eternal. I don't know how big of an impact he had, but considering he was brought over to the Dallas Fuel to continue working uh, with that team and continue coaching with that team, uh, tells me a decent amount that, that he probably is a, a pretty good coach and actually had a, a decent impact on that team's success. And so that's something that uh, I like to see. I like to see players um, make that jump into coaching and then uh, have uh, success. I think that's always a really good way to keep players in your in your game, uh, keep them from going outside the game, and then it keeps some of those veteran players um, as presences uh, continuing to kind of keep their fan base going for the future. Overall, I do think this is a good Guangzhou Charge team. I'm, I am concerned about them when you look at some of the other teams in this region. You have teams like Hangzhou that I think have greatly improved. You have a Seoul Dynasty team who, though they didn't make a ton of changes, they are coming off of a very good playoff performance. They have some of those consistent spots in their roster now fixed. They have a, a flex tank that they feel confident in. They have a new main support who, though I don't think there were problems with Toby last season, I think Animo has proven himself to be kind of a better player. You know, you have stuff like that going on with the Seoul Dynasty. Um, I don't want to get too much in the Seoul Dynasty because we'll talk about them um, in a couple weeks. And so I think that is a huge plus um, for some of this region is that there's some some better players and some better teams in this region um, than there were in you know previous seasons. And you have teams like New York that have brought in a ton of young talent where I think that there's the potential for a team like New York to be better because they have the higher potential, I think. It may take them a little bit longer to find it, but you have that. Plus you have... The Fusion who are coming off a really good season, and the Shock coming off a really good, or not the Shock, the Dragons coming off a really good season. You know, three of the teams that were in the top five last season are all playing in Asia. Um, and while there's some decent changes to the Fusion um, and the charge of the other team in the top five, like, this is a tough region. And even you look at like the top ten, you know, the, the Valiant, though who knows what's going to happen with them, we're in the top 10. Shanghai, Fusion, New York, the Spark, the Dynasty are just outside that in 11th. Um, you go down a little further, then you get the Chengdu, who were, were pretty low in the list, but I think they're a very improved roster. This region's going to be very, very tough, I think, for a team like Guangzhou with this new roster to find a ton of improvements. I don't think this is a better Guangzhou charge roster than what we saw last season. Um, it, it may be better in some spots, um, and I could be wrong 100%. Um, but I, I don't think that the Guangzhou Charge roster ended the season very well last season. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is a team that with the new coaching staff and with some of these new players, they will find more success and they will be able to come up better, especially late in the season. But right now, I'm not 100% convinced that this is a team that is going to improve upon and build upon the progress they made last season, especially early in the season. I think they'll have some, some growing pains and some struggles, 
Um, but I think by the end of the season, that's where I think maybe things will start to click more. And we'll see them kind of hit a stride and start to perform at a higher level than we have in the past. But those are just my opinions. That is my thoughts on the Guangzhou charts. Let me know your own thoughts on this team in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing for more content like this in the future. Thank you all once again for watching. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. I know things are getting weird, especially in 2021, even though we, we all thought 2020 would be where it, you know, <laughs> couldn't get any worse. But it 2021 really is uh, trying, <laughs> trying to test us. But that's all for me for today. Thank you once again. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.